Hey y'all and welcome back to my garden. So today is the very last day of April and I promised myself that I would do a video every month as we develop our new garden. So I'm not going to let the last day of April keep me from doing it. So today is the last day of April and this will be our April garden tour. Plus I am going to show you what we've been doing on the inside of our house that's really exciting. So, let's go inside and take a look. Okay, let's go inside. Hey, Miss Winnie. Okay, I guess she's going to stay on the porch. Are you going to come inside? Okay. So, Miss Winnie said, welcome to my home. Let's see. So, I should have the light on. So, back a couple of months ago, we had our refrigerator ice maker leaked and caused our floors to get damaged in our kitchen. So, this is the area where we've been, we have the hardwood floor replaced. And the worst area was like right in here. So, had that done last week. And we're having this pantry remade because of the water damage. And you can see there's like a separation there. So that is going to be remade. We're going to be getting a new refrigerator. And then since we have to get a new pantry, we've got to have the stain to match. Sorry about all the stuff. So we're having the cabinets um, are going to be restained to match. So all the cabinet faces are off we also <laughs> our new dishwasher is out so we can't use that right now so this is the chaos of our kitchen and while we're at it we're like you know we're doing all this work we might as well replace our countertops because they're really dark and really outdated so we're doing new color stain new countertops new sink because this sink has this little separation right here where it wasn't properly mounted underneath new faucet so this all will be replaced and we're going to be getting a new stove it'll be the same kind that we have here it'll just be newer this is from like 2008 so we're actually going to keep the double ovens in the microwave but everything else refrigerator and stove will be going our dishwasher is new so it'll be staying and then as we go into here, this is the dining room, but we use it as an office. So we have all the bookshelves moved out. And we had some cracking of the, not really cracking, but like separation on the hardwood. So they took those out and put in a wider piece to fix that. This is all of our doors right here. These are the ones that have been sanded so far. And then here are our new grates which are really nice because these are the old ones and you can see they were in really bad shape so these are nice and new and they'll be sanded flush with the floor all this floor will have to be sanded and stained and finished so as you go into here where miss winnie is at there's our dishwasher hi miss winnie here are our color samples on the floor. Which one do you like, Winnie? So we have Provincial, Special Walnut, um, Early American, and Dark Walnut. So we're really not sure exactly which one we want to use yet. And this is where they sanded it to get ready for, to show us samples. So we have dust all over. And then this place right here this is another one of those cracks that they were fixing. And I can show you right here because they haven't fixed this one yet. They wanted to come back with some longer pieces. But under here is plywood. And the plywood was ran vertical. And the flooring was ran vertical. So the seam of the plywood, as it expanded over time, took the floor with it in certain spots. So I think they should have did the plywood horizontal and the flooring vertical, but we're getting all that fixed now. So this will be all fixed. It won't have a crack anymore. So 
This is what we have been doing the last, what, week, Winnie? Yep. So they started this last Friday. And we got the countertops ordered today. We're gonna do a quartz site for the countertops and they're gonna be lighter. And that'll be really, really nice. And then we'll have a lighter color on our cabinets instead of the dark cherry color. Doesn't that look funny with all this open? Such a weird sight. So I think it's gonna look a lot lighter and a lot brighter. All right, guys. Well, we've went through our little crazy home renovation. If you would like for me to show more on my channel, just let me know. And I don't mind showing, sharing the process with you and how we do everything because I've actually been the general contractor on this job. So um, let me know and I'll be sure to share as we go along if that's something that interests you. But let's go take a look at the garden because we have some exciting things. Right, Miss Winnie? And Miss Winnie is doing a lot better. She got her stitches out yesterday. Do you feel better? Yes, you do. All right, you wanna go show them the garden? All right, let's go show them the garden. Okay, guys, so let's just start here in the shade garden. This is at the back of the house on the right side. So you can see our, our little bleeding heart here. It has finished with its little blooms and it's starting to get yellow. And that's the thing with bleeding hearts that it does. It'll turn yellow, then it dies back for the rest of the summer. Then we have our um, plumeria, and that was really, really pretty. I'd actually planted it in the um, other part of the garden over here, right in here, but it was too much sun. So I set it back here, and this little plumeria, our lungwort, um, it loves it over here. And it's looking really, really pretty. So it just had its first flush of blooms and now you just have these beautiful leaves we also have the hookra it's interesting to me that the, the leaves had turned kind of orange and now they're getting really red so that's really pretty very interesting very pretty on the little flowers here and then we just have an array of different hostas i have been treating these with the the bug and slug because we've had some slugs and some like little beetle things trying to eat on them. This is a little transplant from last year from our fall planter. This is a chrysanthemum and I need to come out here and do it some more, but I like to pinch back their little blooms. It's super easy to do. And then when it gets closer to fall, probably like in August, then I will let it start blooming. And so hopefully we'll get a pretty flush of blooms this fall. Here's a little columbine that I picked up at Lowe's that was in the 50% off discount area. So it's kind of limping its way along, but it's actually coming out with some more green leaves. So hopefully it looked more like this when I bought it. I always like to try to see if I can get them to come back to life. I always feel bad for them when they're in that 50% off section. Now this one is doing really good here. So. This is the same kind of hosta as this hosta. And guys, I don't pay a lot for hostas. I just feel like there's just so many different varieties and that you can usually get them when they're marked down 50% off or you can just get them at Walmart for like $4.97. So this is the one of the hostas that got eaten the most, but the new leaves are coming back. It does have one little spot there on it, but hopefully see all that bug and slug killer around it. Hopefully that'll help. And then we have another one of the chrysanthemums from the fall and it's coming back looking good. Same thing. I just need to go through and just kind of pick off all of these little blossoms that are trying to come out. And then I had a piece of the ornamental oregano that broke. So I just popped it in the ground and it's actually growing. And we painted some little impatience there. And then the beautiful foxglove is blooming. She's actually starting to lose some of her blooms, but I hate all this background right here. So ugly, but this, so beautiful. This was grown by seed from last year and my daughter had planted it and I just popped it over here because we had all these random seeds 
and I th thought, oh, it's not going to do anything, but it has done so good. And it's beside this little drainage, <laughs> little drainage hole that we put in here. We had to run drainage from this section. Me and my daughter dug underneath the sidewalk, and then we put one of those little pop-up things here in the yard. That was a chore. So, we've got it underplanted with some little snapdragons, and I need to come out here and kind of deadhead them. But they're kind of coming along here. And the beautiful foxglove. Can you believe that's from seed, guys? So pretty. Look at the inside of it. And I love that it's tucked away over here, away from the puppies. All right. So, I think I've been a little deceived what I thought was my shade garden. So, I kept thinking that about right there, we had shade. And I think we do in the summer. But this time of year in the spring, there's still a lot of light that hits these plants. So, as you can see... Some of the hostas are not too happy with me. So they have kind of went through a little shock and I may end up having to move some of them, but I'm just gonna give them a chance and see what they do. Maybe they'll limp it along. This is our beautiful lace cap hydrangea. This is the one that when we brought it from Virginia to New Jersey, all the leaves got knocked off of it in the back of the truck, but it is doing fantastic now. And then we planted some little marigolds. These are white marigolds that we grew from seed. So I'm excited to see what they look like. And then we've got our pink phlox there, surrounded by some of our hostas. Pretty hookah there. I love the little pop of red. And then, I forgot to even say, I know you noticed all of our beautiful mulch. So we did that this weekend. We laid down 54 bags of mulch. So it is looking so much better. This is our incredible hydrangeas and they are starting to come out of dormancy. These are the ones that we moved from the front to the back. Look, I was so worried about them, but they are doing so good. Now this little host of right here, she's loving life. But I think I've always read that variegated ones do a little bit better in the sun. This is our Autumn Joy Sedum. And it has done really good. These are the ones that had chlorosis really bad last year. So I'm really watching them to make sure we're not getting chlorosis again. And if we do, I will treat them for chlorosis. But they are doing super good and they're so soft. Then our tall guy, Arborvites, they are getting so big. They've grown so much. We were so lucky when we planted them. It was still cold. And then we got this rain period of about three weeks. So they were just rained on every single day and they have done so good. This is our angel wing Sinocio and it is doing so good. I don't give it as much water as like I would a lamb's ear. So when I'm watering, and I'm gonna get our drip set up, I just don't have it set up yet, but I just kind of give it a little bit of water and it likes that. And then as we go along, we planted a little lantana here. And then we have our ornamental oregano. You'll see that a lot through the garden. So we kind of wanted to create like a ground cover. And then in the back here, we have a whole row of the zinnias the wedding blend from Florette, and it goes all the way through there. Let's see, here's one that's a little bit bigger. These are the ones we grew in the winter sowing method in the milk jugs, and we just planted these out last weekend. So some of them, like this one's really happy, but then some of them aren't as happy. Like that one there, it's not as happy. So, but that's okay, even if we just get half of them. Don't step on Nana's plants. No, 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 no. Come on. So we're trying to keep her off the seedlings. All right. Can we walk through here, Winnie, and come show them our flowers? Okay. So then here's our lamium. It has really pretty purple flowers on it right now. Yeah. Nice, doesn't it? Sorry. That's Winnie's breathing. 
And there's our pretty peony. And then another lamium over here. Okay. <laughs> Do you love it? Oh my goodness. She's a mess. All right, let's get out of the garden. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Oh, you're going to get dirty. Come on. All right, guys. So let's walk around here. You'll see a lot of the same things like the ornamental oregano, the Incredibles, the zinnias in the back, and then the catmint. Then we had transplanted some of these little snapdragons that we wintered over from last year. And this Incredibles is really tall. Then we have these little seedlings, little tiny seedlings as you'll see through here of snapdragons that we winter sowed. I don't know if they're gonna make it or not because they were so tiny. But if they don't, we haven't lost anything. All right, so let's go back to here. So we have a little row of lavender here. This was a lavender my daughter bought. This is one that I grew from seed. And this one here is the one that I grew from a little cutting. So that one's doing really well. I'm happy about the one with the seed because those are hard to grow from seed. And then here is our Autumn Joy Sedum again. And then we have a little trio of our lamb's ear. And I'm seeing that something's eating on the lamb's ear too. So I might need to come and treat this. I've never noticed that yet. All right, so it's doing good. A little Biden there, a little sweet Biden. And then we have our little trio of roses. All right, I'm gonna put Winnie up so she doesn't disturb our garden tour. Okay guys, so I have Winnie, Winnie inside. She was getting hot anyway. She needed to go in here. So this is our trio of roses. This is our Onwick rose. This is the pink one from David Austin. And then we have our Claire Austin. And then we have our Lady of Shalott. Come this way so you don't see my shadow but you can see how much growth they have put on. Looking really good. And then over here, we have our little trio of the Platinum Blonde Lavender by the Southern Living Plant Collection. I did cut this one down really short this spring, early spring, and it looked like it was really, really mad at me, but now it has just flush back and it has the most beautiful smell. It is the prettiest lavender. And we have some more of our lamium here. This is the one with the little pink flowers. And then we have our patio peach. So look at here, guys. Look at the cute little peaches. So we've actually lost a lot of peaches on it. But that's okay, because it was like literally just covered in peaches, all these little peaches. And then I have planted them with the alyssum and I just scattered some seeds through here. Look how pretty. This little spot right here didn't take very well, so I might need to put a couple more seeds in here. These are the little packs that come from like the dollar store that are like four for a dollar, but they're beautiful and they smell good too. So this is our little patio peach. It had the prettiest blossoms on it this year. And then we've got to work on finishing up this edge. We're going to kind of round this bed off here. So we have to remove some of this grass, clean up this edge here, and then we're going to round it off here. So when we go to cut grass, it'll be a nice round so it'll be easier to cut grass because sharp corners like that are hard to cut grass when you're on a riding lawnmower. Okay, coming over here, we have another one of our lamb's ear, some more of the cat mint, and then we have our Incredibles. I can't wait till they start blooming. A sweet little snapdragon back here. I know it's crooked, but that's the way it was growing when I planted it. And then we have another peony here, or peony. I don't know how you pronounce them. More of the ornamental oregano. And then this is a little apricot drift rose. So it had a beautiful flush for like a couple of months. Look how glossy the leaves are. 
but it's kind of resting right now and it's getting more buds on it. And then we just kind of have a repeating pattern, more of the ornamental oregano, incredibles, lamium, lamb's ear, cat mint, and then a beautiful iris. And then over here in this corner, this is a blackberry that we bought back in 2020 and it has traveled with us from house to house in this pot. And I usually just refresh the pot with some fresh soil like on the top and give it some fertilizer and it has the best blackberries and it's thornless, so that's nice. So that is our blackberry. So let's go over to the next section of our, of our garden, but this is our cottage garden and I am thinking it is looking beautiful so far. Okay, so this section I would call like our pool garden because it's around the swimming pool. Pool's looking better, so <laughs> it was very green at the beginning. So we have our um, kind of like a pattern almost. Sometimes it's a pattern, sometimes it gets a little off. But here is a hydrangea here. And then we have our cat mint. And this is our pink muley grass. And then I just popped in a little um, vinca there. But I planted this banana creams. Uh, it's not very happy with me. This is the Amazing Daisy banana cream. And I think it just got too hot. I did water everything really good and I've been watering it every day, but we'll see if it bounces back. But then you can see like the little pattern of the cat mint on the backside with the pink muley grass and then we'll have our pink sedum. And it's gonna be so pretty because we're gonna have pink, purple, pink, purple, pink, purple, and these will be white and pink. And then as we go around here, you can see those little daisies are not doing good. Then I planted up this little planter here, which is so funny because this keeps flopping inside of it and I want it to flop outside of it. But this is our Creeping Jenny that we wintered over. And these are some of the white marigolds. And look, they've got a little, little bloom there. So this should be pretty. They're all kind of wanting to lean. I think the way, way the wind blows them this way. So I might need to turn them around a little bit. And then we have our pattern here. I'd like to get like a, maybe an arch to go right here. I think that would be kind of neat as you're heading out towards the, the gate here. Maybe have an arch and have something kind of growing up over top of it. And then we have the same pattern with the hydrangeas, the Shasta daisies, the pink muley grass. And I think this is kind of where we have a little bit more like space in between. So I think I messed up here on something or I didn't measure it out correctly, but that's okay. Once everything fills in, it won't make that big of a difference. And then we have the same that goes on through here. So we ended up using 54 bags of mulch. We have six bags left. And then we've got some more dirt and then we've got to finish up this here. So we're gonna make this curve and hopefully we can get all the way through here. I'm thinking that we may put some of our, um, we have three of these arborvitaes that I've been growing on in pots and I hate to take them out of the pots, but I was thinking it might look good to have them through here. We will have to be careful because we have an electrical line there. So we will have to get that marked. Then we have some of our um, sedum here that has went to full bloom. Look how pretty, guys. I know a lot of people just use these kind of like decorative in their arrangements, and then they just pull them out and throw them away, but oh gosh, if you let them bloom, they're gorgeous. Then we have a little lilac here. This is my daughter's lilac. And then we have some of our fall gold raspberries, and they have really grown, so I gotta get them in a bigger pot. And then over here in this corner, we have our blueberries. And then I also put some alyssum seed underneath. So this is a blueberry called Pink Lemonade. So I'm not sure if it's going to have berries this year. It has a couple little blooms on it, but that's okay. It can just work on its roots this year. This is a blueberry that we've had for couple of years now. You can see it's got some little blueberries there. 
And this is the oldest blueberry we have, and it's from 2020. So this is our COVID blueberry bush. Same thing, we've had them in these pots. Um, I just add new soil to the top of them, and I use like the soil for acidic loving plants. Look at this cluster back here, guys. Wow, that is crazy. So they're doing super good. And then we have this little knockout rose. This is one of my daughters. It has never, it's never done the best, but we kind of just keep limping it along and giving it fertilizer, but we'll have like a section of it that'll break out. And you can see how woody the base is down there, but she's trying. So we just keep limping her along and taking care of her. All right, so I wanna show you a section of our garden that I've never showed you before. And we're gonna go out to our orchard. Before we get to the orchard, this is my daughter's bunny barn. See, she's got her little parsley in the window and her little carrots hung up. So this is where her bunny lives. And then she planted her some little flowers in here. So she has some little um, violas and then some little um, ground cover there. It's like a variegated vinca ground cover. And then she has a little wildflower mix. So probably get pretty close to pulling her vincas up and planting or something different, but she was excited to put that in. So, you know, with kids, you just let them experiment and, and learn. Oh, and there's some of her bunny hair. Speaking of experimenting and learning, this is my son's ground rod here for his experimenting. And then we have our kayaks back here. So here is our little orchard. It's not much, but we do have two peach trees. So this peach tree last year got broke by the deer and this year got broke by the deer. So, hmm, I guess the deer don't understand that if you tear up the trees, you're not gonna have any fruit off of them. So we need to have a fence around all of this. This is our other peach tree. So this one does have some peaches on it. It's hard though, guys, to keep these things alive. The, between the deer and the squirrels and the bugs. And then here is our um, one of our apple trees. And it just got flower, it just got finished flowering. And it was really pretty. And then here is another apple tree. Let's see what this one is. That one lost its tag. This is a Golden Delicious. So it's doing good. And then we have some muscadines. Here is one here. These are ones that my dad had given me from one of his neighbors. You can tell it loves that full sun because it likes it over here. And then here is a grape. And then one more muscadine. That is our little our little orchard it would be nice one day if we could have a fence around everything it would be really pretty to keep the deer out all right guys so let's go around the front and i'll show you the front garden and how it's looking Okay, so here we are around the front. We've got um, three of the Starry Starry Night hibiscus that bloom in a pink color. And then we have our row of our Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. And it is gorgeous. Followed behind with our Limelight Hydrangeas. And we have little scatterings of our Creeping Jenny. And we are gonna getting ready to add our um, petunias here on the front. Then we have our little boxwoods here and Winnie's little egg. Our daffodils are all finished. And then we have our blushing bride 
hydrangeas and they're starting to get some buds on them. Beautiful. Then we have more of that little sedum that just kind of popped up here in that corner. And we have some daffodils. No, sorry, daylilies. And these are the arborvitaes that I was talking about that we may put in the back. And then we have this little pot of daffodils I need to pull up. They're finished. Cute little flower here. Ooh, bees. She's trying to attack me. See them there? And then we have a begonia. I think I need to move it out of the sun a little bit though because it's getting a little bit crispy on some of these leaves. So I might need to pull it back a little bit. And this is the same way. A little crispy there. And then going around here, our daylilies are about to bloom in this corner. And we have more of the Blushing Bride hydrangeas. This is the one I had to replace um, last year. So that's a replacement. That's why it's a little bit bigger. And <laughs> we tried to tie down some of these of the daffodils like Janie had done on deck, dig, war, dig plant water repeat, but it was, it was just taking up too much time. Here is our little um, dwarf Fat Albert blue spruce backed with our boxwoods. And these are like little lavender miniature roses and they are doing so good. So I just plopped the little bird bath here in the middle, but look how pretty. And they're just ones I picked up at Walmart. They were just called lavender, lavender min miniature rose. They're gorgeous. Praying that the deer don't eat them. And then we have some of our serendipity alliums that we planted last fall, and I got a couple more. So I need to get those in the ground ASAP. And here's a couple of our little hydrangeas we've been limping along here that the deer had just eaten down to decimation. But this is all doing really good and I can't wait to get our supertunias in because it's gonna be gorgeous. And then here's a couple of the false hollies that I need to get planted. I'm really not sure where I'm gonna plant them yet. So the front is looking really good, but once we get those supertunias in, it is gonna be like night and day difference. It's gonna be so pretty. Still working on our grass, getting a lot of the weeds killed out of it. Need to still work on these patches here. So we're thinking about putting down some centipede seed see if we can get some grass seed to grow here in these patches it's like this patch that runs all the way through here we're thinking that it maybe had something parked here maybe like an rv or a boat or something but the grass is just having a hard time coming up in these spots but the rest of the grass looks really good and you can just see the nepeta, it just like pops from that side. So I'm really excited and everything is looking great. I can't wait for the Incrediball, I mean the Limelight Hydrangeas. It's hard for me to go back because we had Incrediballs there. Now we have the Limelight Hydrangeas. So I can't wait until they bloom this year. I think it's going to be gorgeous. So I think everything is coming together. Okay guys, so that is the end of our April garden tour, Better Late Than Never, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please go back and watch our previous videos so you can see all the transformation because I know everything looks, <laughs> looks still kind of small, but it has grown so much and the transformation has been tremendous. So I encourage you to go back and watch those videos and keep watching as we do the transformation on the yard and on the inside of the house. And like I said, let me know if you want to hear about more of the house stuff that's going on because I would love to share that with you as well. Not just our garden content, but our home content. 
So, um, it is like 78 degrees on the last day of April in North Carolina, and I am thoroughly sweaty. So, I am going to go in and get me a glass of sweet tea and sit out here on the porch for a little bit longer and cool off. But I hope you are having a wonderful week, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, friends.